Hi everyone, it's Elise from Kit and Clatter, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I'm colouring up Wizardette by Tiddly Inks. So I'll be sharing a few techniques with you in this video, and uh, one of the first techniques is how to achieve a glow with your Copic markers. So you can see she's holding a few bubbles there and she's got a wand as well. So I wanted to do a glow on those objects and have them reflect back onto her hair and onto her face which is why I've left those areas uncolored because that's what we'll be focusing on in this tutorial. And then once we've finished the image, I wanted to go in and give her a really nice um, black gray background, but I'm going to be using my distress inks to do this because I really wanted a really smooth gradient. Okay, so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to color the glowing objects. So I wanted to do those bubbles sort of like a neon green colour. So I'm using my YG markers. So I'm going to go in and just colour these bubbles first before I colour anything else. Um, the way I'm going to explain how to do this is I want the lightest part of the bubble on this side because I want it to be glowing onto her face and onto her hair around her as well. So that lightest area of the bubble that's glowing is going to be hitting all of these areas. And it'll be the same with the wand as well, but you know, I went ahead and colored up this side of her hair so I didn't have to spend forever coloring it in the video, but really if you're doing this yourself I'd be doing a glow down here as well but I just went a bit too far ahead so I won't be able to achieve that in this video. What I'm going to start with is my YG17 which is going to be my darkest color and I'm going to go in on this side because it's the the darkest side of the bubble and I'm just going to lay that color down I'm going to do it on each of the little bubbles up here. Now I'm going to go in with my YG23. So even though it's a higher number than the YG17, it's actually got um, a bit more yellow in it, so it, it does appear a bit lighter. So I'm just blending that out. Now I'm going in with my YG03 and again I'm blending it out. Now my YG00 is going to be my glow color. So I'm going to come in and just blend in the opposite direction of those other colors and over the whole bubble in that YG00. So you can see it's almost like a, a fluorescent greeny yellow. Okay, I'm just going to come back in a second time and I'm going to darken up the color as I do with all of my coloring. So this is my YG17. My YG23. My YG03. And now back over the top in the opposite direction with my YG00. Okay, the next step is I'm going to be reflecting the glow of the YG00 onto her features. So I haven't colored her face or her hair in on this side where I want the glow to be. But I'm just going to go, this is my YG00 and I'm just flicking where that glow will be. Just a really light feathering stroke. And she's going to have some in her hair as well. So that's why I've left this side uncolored. I'm not really being particularly careful, I'm just laying down the colour because you can go back in and control it a bit later. So now that I've laid that colour down, I'm going to go and colour her skin in. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got my E000, which is my lightest color, and I'm starting in the opposite direction and I'm flicking into that YG00. I'm doing some shading now of my E00, so under her hairline she'd have a shadow because her hair is sitting forward of her face. And when you're doing an image that has an object glowing in it, you have to be aware that not only do you have the normal shadows, but then you have a different light source. So say my sun was coming from this, this direction over here, I'd have sun hitting these parts, but then I've got this light source, so now light's hitting the side as well. So you just have to be aware of um, what direction that light is actually moving in. See, I'm only adding a really light shadow just under that hairline there. My E21, just to darken up those shadows. And my E11. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little eyelid. So I'm just holding my marker really close to the tip so I can control the line. Now just blending out with my E21. A double zero. And now my E triple zero. And I'm bringing the color down over that um, YG double zero. Now what I'll do now, just to intensify that glow, is I'm going to go back in with my YG triple zero and just darken that up. And then my E triple zero and just blend out that edge. See, it probably looks a little bit funny now as we haven't colored up the rest of the image, but it'll all come together once it's colored up. Going ahead and coloring in her hand now. And this technique is really good. You can use it um, if you're coloring in an actual lamp, so an actual light source. Um, good for Christmas images where there's a lamp or a lampshade. Um, and what you can do instead of using a YG double zero, which is more green, you could use a Y double zero or a Y triple zero if you want a really soft light. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, now that I've done her skin, is I'm going to show you how I color her hair. I'm using my E13 as my lightest color here. So she does have very curly hair, so I thought I'd show you how I do that as well. So starting in the hairline, I'm just going to flick out, and I am holding my nib really close to the end here, as you can see, because I want a really fine stroke. So I'm flicking up to where those curves are starting. So 
So a good way to look at hair is if you're doing curly hair, you've got like a mountain and then you've got like a valley. So that mountain, that raised part is going to be the lightest. So we'd flip into the mountain and then down and out. Now we do have the glow here, but she still needs to have a little bit of shading. So I'm just going to go in with my E13. Then I'm basically going to leave that little area area as it is with the, the glow still coming through. Just turning my image around to do the flicks away from myself. With these two sections here, you can see that this section is actually sitting forward of this back section. So I just shade around the edge and you can see um, Christy the artist has even put in a little bit of shading. So you can follow that as a guide. I'm flicking towards that mountain area. And then she's got this back section here, which is obviously sitting behind. So I'm just going to go and color all that in. Okay, now what I want to do in that section where her hair's glowing is I'm going to get my darkest green, which is my YG17. And that's what I'm going to use to darken up those highlights. I don't want to use my darkest browns that I would usually use on the rest of the hair because that's just going to make her hair look brown. So working in the same colors that I used in this bubble here and should have a glow here and I've missed a little bubble there so Okay, so I've put in that next layer of colouring with um, my YG17 over the top of that glow. Over the rest of her hair, I'm going to go in with my E15 and lay down a bit more colour. When I do the hair, I'm just flicking, I'm not blending. So it's a really light, quick flicking motion. I'm sorry if turning the page a lot is um, making you dizzy. It's just easier to, to sometimes look away from yourself. Oh, and I did colour her up like Harry Potter as well. Those of you that know me, um, especially <laughs> Elaine in the UK, I have bugged her to send me pictures of the Harry Potter Museum. So I am a big Harry Potter fan. And I was going to even colour her scarf like um, Slytherin to make her look evil because she was casting these glowing bubbles, but I actually couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> she had to be Gryffindor. Now I'm going in with my E18, which is the darkest color for the hair. And I'm just darkening up all those shadows. And still I'm not extending that color into this glowing area. Okay, so that's the first layer of color on her hair. So I'm going back in with my E15 and I'm blending out, but it's not really blending, it's more just like you're flicking over that previous color. So I know a lot of people here actually blend the hair. If you wanna do it how I've done it on this right hand side, you actually don't blend the colors together. You're just flicking back over the top like you did in those first steps. And again, keeping that band there uncolored because that's going to be your green band. We'll be coming back to that in a minute. And now my lightest color, which is my E13, and I'm doing the same thing. It's the blending, but it's really just flicking back over the top. And when you flick, you're still pulling those other colors back out. So it is still blending it without coloring it in like you would on, on say, clothing. And I'm just going to go back in, this is my E18, and I'm really quickly just adding another layer of colour. The second layer really helps to darken up your shadows. So I think it's really um, nice to do just to intensify the colour. And I'm just going to blend out really quickly my E15. I'm trying to do this just really fast so I don't bore you with these steps. Now I'll go back over the top with my E13.
Okay, so now I'm going to be working on that um, green section of her hair. So just grabbing those colours uh, that I used on those bubbles again. So we've got the YG17 and I'm going to go ahead and lay another layer of that colour down. Just to really darken it up. I'm going to go in with my YG23. And now I'm going to go in with my YG00. If your marker gets dirty, just get a scrap piece of paper. See, it's picked up a bit of that brown, but once you... Oops, I was doing that in the wrong section. <laughs> Once you um, swirl it around a bit, you'll see that the brown actually comes off the marker. Again, picked up a bit of brown on the tip. Just clean your marker off. Okay, now you can see she's getting a bit of that glow in her hair and on her skin too. Go and darken that up a little bit if you want and you know I might come in with my um, YG17 and I might just do the shadows on her face with this darker green as well and then I'll blend that out with my YG23 Then I've got my my G06, and then my YG03. Sorry, my YG00. Just definitely got a bit more of a glow now. And then if I want to soften that back out, I grab my. E triple zero and just go over that line. Just gonna go in over her eyelid again as well because we've coloured that out. my YG17 yeah okay now the next thing I want to do is I want to do a glow around those bubbles that are sitting outside of her face so I'm grabbing my YG00 and my blender so this is what we're going to do around the wand as well so I just want to do a really light flick and I'm just flicking around those bubbles. And now what I want to do is I want to get my colorless blender and I'm going to be coloring from the white in. So what that'll do is it'll remove any harsh lines that I get from just coloring that. But I did do it with a really light feathering motion so I didn't really put like a square line around it but this should just remove if, if there are any harsh lines and it'll soften the color as well we still really want those bubbles to pop now that we've just done that I'm going to go ahead and do it around her wand too down here so she's going to have the glow the whole way around her wand And then I'm going to get my blender and I'm going from the white down into that YG00. I'm going to go and color it in her wand now as well. I'm going to use those same green tones. So 
So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to do the glow coming up as well. So I've got the YG17 and I'm doing the bottoms of all those circles. And I might just add a few flicks sort of around here. So underneath those lines that are already drawn in. Then I'm getting my YG23 and I'm sort of just blending that out a tiny bit. My YG06. And then my YG00. And then I'm just going to get my blender because I did sort of go outside of the lines. And I'm just softening any edges that I've made with the YG00. Okay, so that's my image all coloured up. And now what I'm going to do is I really want her to have um, like a black background. And so I'm going to use it, do it with my Distress inks, just because I didn't really want any harsh lines from my Copic markers. So I'm going to be using two different colours to do that. I'm going to be using firstly my little Memento London Fog. And I've got one of my Distress inkers. It's kind of dirty. But um, I don't have one of those little mats, so I'm actually just going to use a plastic bag. Oops. Okay, so what I do here is I'm going to take my um, pad and I'm just inking up that edge there, you can see. And I'll move that out of the way. And then literally I start on the plastic bag and I'm going to bring my color in onto the image. I'm not the best at using distress inks. I'm a little bit um, scared of ruining my images. So I, I apply the ink a lot lighter than some people do. So I have to go back in and do a lot of coats for this to really work properly. So, but you can see I'm starting in on the plastic and pulling in towards my image. So that means that around the edges, it's going to be darker than the rest of the image, which is the one I wanted. I, the glow is around her. so. Realistically, the background away from her should be darker. I think this color is great because it's got a bit of green in it, so it's perfect for what we're doing with the glowing, glowing image. So this is only our first coat as well. So it's still going to look quite gray, it's not really black. If you are using a plastic bag, which is really not the best thing to do, you just have to hold it tight. I'm actually holding it with my arm so it doesn't move as much.
where you've got the glow here up the top, I'm only really extending my ink pad to where the green starts because I don't really want to remove any of that glow. Okay, so that's my first layer. Now I'm actually going to go in with my Memento Tuxedo Black. Because I want all of these edges around her to be really quite dark. So by doing the two colors, you'll actually have the gradient of color. So towards her, it'll be quite light, but then your outer edges will be quite dark. So I'm just not extending that color all the way in towards her like I did with that previous um, gray color. So you can see we're actually getting a really nice gradient there. So I recommend taking your time with the Distress inks and really um, getting a look that you really like. I might just stop there because I am going really slow. So um, what I'll do is I might just speed up the rest of the video and then you don't have to sit through me inking up my image over and over. Okay, so now that you've inked up your image, I'm just gonna go and add one final touch. I have my Molito pen here, which is a white paint pen, and I'm just gonna go in and add some final highlights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to follow this line that's here in the bubble. And I'm basically going around and adding highlights to each bubble. And then I'm going to do it down here where her wand is too. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you've got any questions, as always, please just let me know. Thank you so much for watching.